What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Guna channel. And I've got to say, Liverpool's 99th minute winner against Nottingham Forest at the city ground is a kick in the teeth. Because really, Liverpool had no business winning that match. They fielded a patched up side, just like they did in the League Cup final against Chelsea, which they won. Just like they did against Southampton midweek in the FA Cup, which they won convincingly. And you know that we really are going to miss Jurgen Klopp from the Premier League because is there a manager out there that is better at getting results out of players who really shouldn't be getting these kind of results? They had players back today, Soboslai off the bench, Darwin Nunez, Darwin Nunez off the bench and Endo came on and it looks like they might be getting back most of their players just in time for that massive game against Manchester City next weekend. But whatever happens in the Manchester City game tomorrow against Man United. Whatever we do against Sheffield United, they will stay top going into that game. And look, when I predicted the results in the Premier League prediction video I did uh, almost a month ago, this was a game that I saw Liverpool winning. But I hadn't predicted that they would be this depleted. And it feels like this should have been a time where they dropped points. We should have been chasing them down with that game next weekend, potentially a banana skin for them as well. And there was so much to be hopeful for from our point of view. Liverpool, after all, have never won at the City Ground in the Premier League. So this result really... Let me put it this way. I can't imagine another team putting out a team... I can't imagine anyone else in the Premier League being able to field a weakened team this weekend and still get that result, still grind out that result. Not play their best, but still get three points. It's a hugely exciting proposition, Liverpool versus Manchester City next week, because you do hope that it will be a draw, or at least one of them has to drop points, right? And it doesn't make any difference to us. We've still got to go away to Sheffield United and beat them. We've still got to beat Brentford at home. And the rescheduled game against Chelsea is frustrating because it means we go into that Man City game when we play them at the end of March without those three points we might have picked up from that Chelsea game. So this weekend I predicted, or I hoped, I think I hoped more than predicted, that we might see a result from Liverpool that sees them lose ground in the title run-in. And I still feel like they are top of the table now, but won't be come the end of the season. I've predicted Manchester City will win the league. There are games that can change that. Tomorrow, they host Manchester United, and it is a derby. It should be a tricky game. It's a game they won 6-3 last season and were hugely convincing. And I think the real fear now is that the Manchester City side that lines up against Man United tomorrow is almost full strength. They have Erling Haaland, who had not been playing particularly well, had a terrible game against Bournemouth, and then in the next game scored five goals. He is absolutely a machine. I've heard Manchester City recently described as one of those horror movie monsters that you think they're dead and then they just keep coming back at you. That's sort of Frankenstein's monster. And I think that's pretty true. They are like the undead. You can't destroy them. They line up with Foden in the form of his life, with Bernardo Silva on the right wing, Haaland up front with Kevin De Bruyne feeding him. Is there a more profitable goal-scoring partnership than Haaland and Kevin De Bruyne? The back three that they're playing at the moment, Akanji, Ake, Diaz, ahead of them Rodri and Stones playing absolutely out of his skin at the moment. This, There is nothing that I can think about this game except that this might be Man United's worst defeat. And I'm talking about a team that lost 7-0 last season at Anfield. But that team at least had some spirit and some fight. This Manchester United team, we often talk about a spine of a team being strong. Manchester United are spineless. They have a captain who is frankly ridiculous most of the time. His antics on the pitch in the game against Fulham led to a joke TikTok by Fulham, which Ten Hag came out and was angry about, as if it was Fulham's fault that his captain was behaving like an absolute idiot. Let's have a look at the clip now. I would say it's not right. Huh? And uh, it's, it's absolutely not right that um, a club 
make such statements because it's to totally out of order and they were wrong. So they should apologize for this. I would say it's not right. Excuse the interruption. I just wanted to say really quickly, this would be a great spot to click the like button, wouldn't it? And if you haven't subscribed yet, please do. I've just hit a really important milestone in this channel and it's down to people like you supporting. So thank you so much. That's the man who Ten Hag has put in as captain. The back four, probably their strongest area really, Lindelof, Varane. But they're going to be playing Amrabat at left back. Up against the Bernardo Silva. Kobe Mainu, I think, is a great prospect, is alongside Casemiro in midfield, who looks like he's in decline now. They're missing Rasmus Hoyland, who is a bright spark. They're going to be playing Anthony on the right. Is there a worse player in the Premier League at that price tag? Has there ever been? He makes Pogba look like great value for money for Manchester United. So is there any way at all that we can hope that Man City will do anything but annihilate Manchester United. I honestly can't see it. For me, earlier in the season, with four games gone, I did a video about how I thought this was going to be the season that Eric Ten Hag would lose his job. And it was criticised because people said it was a knee-jerk reaction to their first four games. Their opener against Wolves, they were lucky to get three points. They were annihilated by Tottenham. It turns out my prediction was absolutely right. The only thing I didn't get right is the fact that he's still in a job. And it's baffling. Of course, now everybody's talking about how the Jim Radcliffe takeover and they already have someone earmarked to replace Ten Hag. But with Ten Hag still in the FA Cup and with them in a position to qualify for Europe, perhaps it makes more sense to keep him to the end of the season. Much like Bayern Munich have done with Thomas Tuchel. But Eric Ten Hag has got absolutely nothing right as far as I can see. His signings have been terrible. Dropping De Gea, who was one of the best keepers in the Premier League, for Anana, Because he's able to play with the ball and yet they don't as a team. His signing of, his signing of Rasmus Hoyland is a promising signing, I think, for Manchester United. But the price tag was huge. The pressure on him is huge. And he has had four spells of injury. Anthony. Easily the worst signing I can remember. When people criticise Arsenal for signing Kai Havertz, I mean, Mason Mount. Mason Mount has had four starts, I think, this season for Man United. Played eight games. Amrabat came in and was supposed to be that midfield general that was going to help them. And he's going to be playing a left-back tomorrow. There's no discernible style of play. And when Manchester United line up, they tend to, see, they tend to not play in the midfield at all. So Manchester City tomorrow will more than likely use it as a chance to build up goals scored and improve their goal difference. It's not inconceivable to me that we will go into our game against Sheffield United, level and goal difference, having done so much work to improve it. Manchester City versus Manchester United has got to be the most obvious prediction anyone can make. So is there any way at all that... Eric Ten Hag, the dead man walking at Manchester United, can beat this walking dead team that doesn't seem to give up or get beaten and grinds out result after result. Well, they have been grinding out results, but I think tomorrow Manchester City will, will show just how big the gulf in class is and inflict Manchester United's 10th defeat of the season. It's worth remembering that Ole Gunnar Solskjaer lost his job for 12 defeats. They're still going to be 11 games to go for Man United. And the chance of them not losing at least one more is, is slim, next to none. I see them going out of the FA Cup to Liverpool. The only coherent reason I've heard anyone give for why Eric Ten Hag hasn't lost his job yet is because they can't afford to sack him and who would you bring in? There are managers out there. There's Hansi Flick. There's Thomas Tuchel. There are... A host of teams at the end of this season who are going to need a manager. Bayern Munich, Barcelona. I mean, could Man United bring in Xavi? Or something, a miracle manager like that, maybe? I, I don't see it. Rio Ferdinand, of course, for his clickbait earlier in the week, saying that if offered it, Arteta would jump at the chance to manage Manchester United. I know what Rio's doing. We all know what he's doing. He's 
desperately trying to get views. That's what you have to do in this sphere. You have to say something so ridiculous and controversial that people click in just to disagree with you. Well, I'm going to do it now. Eric Ten Hag is finally going to show what he's all about. He's going to galvanise his team. Rashford, who has come out and said passionately that he really cares about Manchester United whilst all the time playing as if he doesn't. This is a player who was in Belfast drinking till the early hours of the morning, missing training the next day with an illness. Look, in the history of Manchester United, that's happened before, by the way. They've had a drinking culture when I was young. Georgie Best, who played before I was into football, probably used to do this all the time. The difference was that George Best would show it on the pitch. I'm sorry, I have no agenda against Marcus Rashford, but taking to... But creating a PR video to explain to people that you really care about a team is not what you're supposed to do as a footballer. Those of us who can't show anything on the pitch have to talk into cameras and tell the world what we think. If you're a footballer, you're expected to do it on the pitch. And there isn't anyone in this Man United team that I think will step up. They will hide. They will go missing. They will give up the midfield. They will... For all Eric Ten Hag's optimistic talk about creating the team that's the fastest a transitioning team in the league, well, he's done that. Because they've gone from being a powerhouse of British football to basically a joke club, a shambles. Unable to beat Fulham at home after a series of really good results, which were good results but not good performances. Their performance against Luton, where they only just got over the line, and Sambi Lekonga was able to boss the midfield. And when Manchester City roll over Man United tomorrow and make it look like a training game, Eric Ten Hag will come out and say, we played pretty well, we played really excellent, it just wasn't that day, and then he'll say all that crap. And let me put it this way. If you're somebody who likes to put the occasional bet on football and you're thinking of putting a pound on Man United tomorrow, do yourself a favour, buy a lottery ticket instead. There is no hope. Am I tempting fate? No, I actually believe this. I genuinely think that Manchester United will lose by four clear goals tomorrow. And I do believe that we will go and get a result at Sheffield United. But all of my hopes at the start of the weekend that this three-horse race to the title might become a two-horse race evaporated with that Nunez goal. This is probably going to go to the wire. And Manchester City, with all their players back, are a daunting prospect. But Liverpool, with their spirit, which I don't think we could match. Not now. I rate Arteta. I love our team. But I have to think, if we had thrown in a couple of the players, let's say Mars Lewis Skelly had had to be thrown into a game because we really didn't have anyone else, I don't think we'd have won three games in a row. And that's not criticism of anyone. I think what Liverpool are doing exceeds and defies expectations. And it would take a greater miracle than they've pulled off in three games in a row for Manchester United to even get a draw. But I'm praying for a miracle. Hallelujah. Come on, it could happen. If we all wish hard enough. So, let's watch tomorrow. Probably, we'll probably have to watch this one through our fingers because this is going to be not so much a football match, but a demolition, a slaughtering. This match tomorrow for me has all the hallmarks of watching your nan take on Mike Tyson for the heavyweight championship of the world. We can all hope. Let me know in the comments if you disagree with me. If you do, you need some sleep. But if you do, I want to hear about it. Or let me know what you think. Let me know your predictions and your thoughts. I respond to every comment. Thank you so much for all the kind support you've given us. As I said earlier, I've reached a really important milestone in this channel. And I'm hugely grateful to all of you for making that possible. I'll be back tomorrow to discuss the inevitable annihilation of Manchester United and how long Eric Ten Hag can last as manager. Until I see you then, be lucky. Lots of love.